Hello and welcome back to our Let's Develop session about refactoring in Eclipse. Throughout the last two episodes we've developed a decent test suite, these nine or ten tests I think, for uh, the move oriental system of Martin Fowler's simple example on refactoring. And in this episode I'm actually going to use this test suite to start our actual refactoring. I just re-executed the test suite using a clamor for test coverage so we can see that uh, the test suite actually covers most of our business logic and all of the uh, big chunk of logic we have here in the customer classes statement method. So what I want to do now is tear apart this method to get some more manageable, more easily comprehensible method parts that we can actually reuse. For example, if we want to uh, add another output format instead of the plain text, some HTML or something like that. Okay, so one remark. In the meantime, I managed to push this code to GitHub. So there's a GitHub repository linked in the show notes. And uh, if you want, go there, check out the code and play around with it. Okay, so let's get started with the actual refactoring. And the first step, the first thing I want to do here is uh, clear the coverage data so that we get rid of the color, uh, color backgrounds here in the statement method and can actually work with the code. Okay, so I will usually go on about uh, some extraction of methods is looking for code chunks that look like they belong together but are separated from the rest of the logic inside the method and I think that this switch statement here is a pretty good candidate for that. And also we talked about earlier that probably this price calculation logic is something we want to reuse in the future uh, especially for something like other output formats so we want to have that at a separated place. Okay so fortunately nowadays there's uh, easy ID IDE support for uh, something like extract method here in Java. Um, apparently this did not exist when Martin Fowler wrote his book because he said that he's really looking forward to the uh, Java support or the Java um, functionality for this extract method. But we have that now and actually we get this pretty nice dialog from Eclipse telling us uh, what is going to be extracted. So we see we can uh, select the modifier we want the extracted method to have. Private is just fine here, I think. And Eclipse also shows us which parameters it's going to create for the method. You can also see that down here in the preview of the new method signature. And what we see is that he's going to create um, a parameter that is the movie rental we're calculating the price for. And he's actually giving in the amount of the movie rental um, that our extracted method is supposed to calculate. And this is actually quite strange because um, I'm quickly, quickly doing this to, to show you what's going to happen, extract this method. Um, what happened now is that I'm actually passing in the amount here and reassigning the amount with a return value. So this feel, this is kind of strange because um, the method we just created is supposed to create the values. So apparently we forgot something. And what we forgot is exactly this line up here, which declares the uh, this amount variable. So effectively, if you look at this code, we're passing in zero here every time. So instead of um, passing it in, we want, of course, uh, to declare the local variable or the variable this amount within the new method, uh, which we can easily do by including this line in our extract method refactoring, say get amount four. Now you see also that we only have one parameter created here, and if we do the refactoring, you can see that the extract method tool is actually smart enough to create. Uh, the this amount variable from the return value of our newly created function. Okay, let's have a short look at this method down here. Um, we can now easily remove this comment because 
basically what the comment says is that we calculate the amount for the rental which is already stated by the method's name so we can just delete this stuff and I will rename the name each to rental because each was never a really good variable name to begin with but it kind of made sense within the loop content context up here but down here it does definitely not make any sense so I rename it to rental okay so the next thing I want to do is extract the logic of the frequent renter point calculation which is actually quite similar to the uh, amount calculation but unfortunately um, it's not that easy to um, extract this because this time we don't have an, a loop local variable for the frequent renter points update but we update uh, the total frequent renter points directly so we have to do something more and there's probably two possibilities to do that um, one is to change the code now here while it's still in place the second is to do the extract method and then adjust the method later on I'm going to go with the first uh, option here I'm going to change the code in place and after that apply the method refactoring Anyways, what we want to do, since we just changed the code, um, even though we only used an automatic refactoring, I want to re-execute our tests just to make sure that I did not break anything. Save the code. Okay, the tests still execute. Everything is fine, and we can go on. Okay, so as I just stated, the problem here is that we directly update the total frequent renter points instead of having a loop local intermediate variable like in this uh, case uh, of the amount. And to get rid of that problem, we can actually introduce uh, such a loop local variable. So say int this frequent renter points set this initially to zero uh, to one because um, we get one frequent renter point in any case and add this newly uh, this newly created variable to the total frequent renter points okay so this should preserve sorry this should preserve the functionality indeed it does and the second thing we want to do is of course also adapt this um, this additional change to the frequent renter points so now it should still work and we're set up to do the actual method extraction by marking this part of the code and applying a extract method for get free Frequent renter points for actually be consistent about the naming, so I give this a uppercase P. And what I can do now is just inline this one call because we see there's the call, we assign the result to this variable, and the variable is directly used and only once. So I can just inline this call. Um, to do the update directly. Now I can get rid of the frequent renter point comment here because I mean that I add the frequent renter points is quite apparent from the code. And okay, let's let's continue with the um, extracted method here for a second. So I do the same thing I did before. Uh, rename this thing to rental because we're not in loop context anymore. Apart from that, I think I'm happy with the method for now. And I actually want to do some clean, some more cleanup up here. Because as we just found out, um, this is actually the total frequent renter points. So I want to rename that to be consistent about the total local thing. And then I want to group things that actually... Um, belong together so I can for example move the frequent renter points down here so we have the total something plus something else uh, grouped down here and we have the actual um, updates up here and there's actually something more I want to do I, I want to inline this variable here uh, I know that it is used twice but 
these kind of variables sometimes make it really hard to do refactoring so I'm going to quickly inline this call to have it one time here and one time here um, so it's it's more clear what really happens and then that these two things are actually kind of independent of one another okay so this is what I want to do for now in the next episode we're actually going to uh, handle these two methods down here because I really think they don't belong to the customer class where they currently are but rather to the rental class that is uh, the first parameter here and we're going to move these methods to the other classes but for today I'll leave it as it is and I hope to see you next time okay this is it for today thanks a lot for watching if you like this episode please give me a thumbs up if not, drop me a comment or send me a message, let me know what you think, I'm always happy to improve on your feedback. You might also want to have a look at my channel and the other things I'm doing, and give me feedback about what you think. Thanks a lot for watching again, and hope to see you next time.